Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a watercolor ice dye. It looks like I turned this shirt inside out, and then I'm just going to create tall, deep scrunches, so tall peaks and low valleys, and I'm going to scrunch it into this over-the-sink strainer that I got from Amazon. And I love doing my ice dyes in these. They're very handy. You can just put it right over top of a tote and the tote will catch all the melting ice. And it's just really super simple. And I have a link for these over the sink strainers down below in the description box, along with everything else that I use for tie dye. So go ahead and check that out. It's just that easy. So now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the dye. And I know I just used powder pink in the previous tutorial, but that's for the playlist. This is something totally different. Several weeks ago, I did this same colorway and I made a little hemostat shirt. And this is the matching mommy shirt. So I'm doing the dye under ice technique. And so you just wanna sprinkle your dye around on the shirt in like little piles. And you can use any colors that you want when you make yours. Next, give your project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure, and then just pack on the ice. And the amount of ice that I like to use is just enough so that I don't see any of the cloth showing through. What you're going to see next is, I made another shirt. These over the sink strainers come in packs of two, so I usually make two shirts in one tote. So the ice had already started to melt on this one. So I added um, some nugget ice to the top, and then I added some ecru, and here is the time lapse. It's the next morning and the ice is finished melting and the shirt is pretty dark but there still are some areas that just don't quite have enough saturation. So I just am re-scrunching the shirt and I'm pulling up the areas that could use more dye and I'm having them exposed. For round two, I'm going to be doing dye over ice. So I add my ice and then I give a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. And I want to have more pink, so I'm only going to be using powder pink all over the top. From here, I'm going to set this aside and let it batch for 48 hours after the ice melts. It's been 48 hours since the ice has melted and now it's time for the rinse out. You want to start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that is still reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here I take it to the washing machine and I do however many hot water cycles it takes using Kirillon. So I take my little plastic cup in the hot water and I scoop it up and when that water looks clear I know that I'm ready for my final hot water cycle using Millsoft and I get both of those from Dharma Trading Company, and you can check the links down below to help you find them. Then I put it into the dryer, and then I iron it, and we come back and we see the results. Well, here it is, guys. Here's our watercolor ice dye after it's been washed and dried, and I think it turned out beautiful. This is my third time using this color palette uh, making tutorials and it never disappoints me. It really reminds me of like Victorian wallpaper. Uh, it definitely reminds me of flowers. The powder pink, you know, is the flower and then the yellow would be like the little pistols and um, 
the green, the sage green, you know, for the leaves. It really is beautiful. So as I just recently did that spiral with all the color splits in the powder pink, it makes a lot more sense now because the previous tutorials when I saw yellow or blue, I was blaming it on the sage green because I just didn't understand where it was coming from. And I do think maybe some of the yellow might be in the sage green, but as we now know, the blue and the yellow and all those uh, peachy tones, a lot of it's coming out of the powder pink. So these close-up shots are just really beautiful. There isn't a lot of movement in this particular shirt like when I did it with the wiffle balls, but it's still absolutely gorgeous. And for this final shot, I thought I would just add the little shirt with it so you can see the matching Mommy and Me set. So if you haven't already seen it, there is a tutorial uh, for this Hemostat flower shirt if you're interested. So what do you guys think of this watercolor scrunch? Go ahead and leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.